This is Rusty Dog reporting to you from the Shinrata Desra system <coughs> and I am at my home base of Jameson Memorial. Today I'm going to be setting off uh, on a relatively short journey to a place known as GCRV4981 and as you can see it's 71 jumps. Now I did say it was relatively short and it is because I'm not taking the Python. I'm going to be going in my ASP. GCRV4981 maybe some of you recognize it, maybe not but if I plot it I won't bother typing it in. I'll just type it in as it's more commonly known and that is the Eskimo Oops, Nebula. Now, it's a small nebula, but it looks kind of interesting. And I'm told there's a black hole there, but there is no planets to land on. So, we're just going to have to look at it from what we can from what we can get really what we're given I'd like to be on the dark side of a planet that's obviously not going to happen uh, so I don't know whether we'll get the full brightness effect um, because there won't be anywhere to escape from the Sun However, so it might be disappointing. I think when we get there, I don't know. However, oh well done, you plotted the course. Uh, so, first thing is to switch out to the ASP. Now the ASP is not kitted out at the moment for exploration because right now it's in the long uh, long range trading and smuggling missions from Rubigo and places like that so why don't we kit it out right now okay So, all this, apart from this, has to go, because I will not be carrying any weapons. I will be carrying shields, but I don't think I'm going to need the boosters. So, I'm going to swap this out for another heatsink launcher, and put them on separate fire groups. I don't want to be firing two at the same time, that's just overkill. And I'm going to sell these back. Why do you make us sit through the animation if we don't want to? But, and then disguise it as though you're verifying and updating. No, you're not. Now the jump range currently, as you'll see, is 27.8. And it will be increasing after every sale here. but it's going to be a lot bigger than what it is right now. Well, it's going to be a little bit bigger than what it is right now. Okay, so, yes, that's the risk. No weapons whatsoever. <coughs> because if I'm interdicted, I'm not gonna, if I was gonna put up weapons, I'd fill them all out. I'd have everything full. Because if I was gonna stop and fight, I'd want everything here. So as my goal would be to just boost and run, I'm not going to need the weapons anyway. And I'm not going to be um, a, a having anything to fire at out there in the void. So once we go beyond populated space, so I don't need them. 
it might prove me wrong, but we will see. So the power plant is now going to go down from an A5 to a D5. Uh, the thrusters are going to go down to a D5 as well. Basically just saving weight. The frame shift drive stays at an A5. The life support stays at D4 because it's pointless. If you are in a situation where your oxygen's running out and you're out in the void, you're already screwed. Power distributor is going to be a D4. Sensors D5, fuel C5, cargo rack's going to disappear. And this is going to be replaced, I've already got one so I'm going to sell that, by a fuel scoop. The big one, the big guy. Oops, I'm going to need name ascending, aren't I? Twenty five million. I was not expecting that. But this scoops at such a fucking rate. Twenty five million though. What's the rate on that? Eight eight. And the C? Six three. Look at the price difference. This will scoop at around 630, and this one eight. Uh, sorry, this one 870, 880. Wow. I mean, I know I can sell it when I get back, but what about the B? See, there's no weight here, so there's no issue. Hmm. I don't want to spend 26 million on a field scoop, but this one to scoop at a slightly less rate. I'll take the B. Uh, right then, where am I? Shields. I'd like to take an extra fuel tank, but that's not going to happen. Because in this class 5 slot, I'm going to be putting D5 shields on. Alright then, so here I want, uh, what do I want, uh, A3 auto field maintenance units, these are 2 million a pop, I'm going to fit two of them because again I am reliably informed that one can repair the other. Now although I'm not going to need it on this mission, I'm sure, but if I ever get a heat heat damage and they're both down to say 98%, this one will repair this one, and then when that one's done, that one will repair this one, and if they need replenishing, I can do that from synthesis. And now I need the all-important planetary hanger, uh, although I don't think I'm going to be using it on this particular occasion. got to buy the vehicle and the rest is taken up with the advanced and the detailed now here's the thing the jump range is 3208 
with this exact layout in Coriolis.io, the jump range is said to be 3451. And I've just realized why that might be. It's because I was looking at the jump range when there's probably no fuel in this thing, I don't know. But I tend to do that on Coriolis. I look at the wrong um I look at the wrong figures and I should be looking at the jump range on a full tank. I'm assuming this has already got fuel in it then. Hmm. Okay, that kind of changes things a bit then. I thought the fuel range was, I thought the, the jump range was going to be 34. But no, Coriolis is correct. Coriolis is correct. Yeah, it's me that has it wrong. So, how many jumps is it to the Eskimo Nebula now? Let's have a look. Oh, it's already replotted it. Okay. Well, I'm going to go there anyway and ask it to do it. Alright. Is it how much better than 71 is it? 29 jumps. A bit more than I was expecting if I'm honest. Okay, so to leave the station, all pips to shields, two to engines. Not that I'm gonna bang it on the wall, but you never know. And uh, yeah, let's go. And I'm not going to obviously keep the recording going through the entire journey. Uh, let me just have a look and see what the fire groups are set to. So I think I'm going to put that on one. Now the heat sink I have set to a button. But if I hit that button. They don't both go off, surely. I don't want them on the same. The thing is, if I need to, if I need to release one, I'm going to do it in a panic. And I'm not going to be wanting to switch to the next um, fire group. Although I could, couldn't I? It's just a flick of a button, then a press of a trigger. I should test this. But if I test it, it means I have to come back and re-dock here and re-arm. Uh, re See, what I would do is this. Knowing that if I if I launch, the, yeah, I'm going to have to test this. So I'm going to run this test. Go away. I'm going to run this test and see if they're both on two. My test is if I launch one. Can I launch one here? My, my test is if I launch a heat sick. Do I get one from each bank launching at the same time. You see, I don't know, so I'm going to have to find that out. So I'm just going to pop out. And it doesn't count as a weapon, does it? Do I need to be out of weapons range for this? I'm not going to take any chances. Not a weapon. 
No, it's not, because I heat sink coming in on the Rubigo run. What am I talking about? Okay, here we go. Let's release one, which is... No, I've got it. Wait a minute. Go away. I've got it set to two, so... Ooh, I think it has let them both go. It has. It does let them both go. Okay. Handy information. Oh, I've never seen that before. An ejected heat sink. Oh, shit. Oh, I've got to be within. Hey! Temba, his arms wide. There may be a few people listening who will know what that is. If you don't, well, it's a Star Trek reference. Don't From a very good episode, actually, called Darmok in the Next Generation. Right, so let's pay that fine. Which I'll... yeah, never mind. Okay, so apart from changing the... There we go. I know that having this here, I'm going to fire it off by mistake. And I want the advanced discovery scanner on too, anyway. And if I want to fire a heatsink launcher, I've got the key. Oh, I know what, I know what this is. I know why it fired too. Of course, if I press the heatsink launch button on the keyboard, it will only launch one of them. But the reason it fired two was because they were both being triggered because they both had number two in them. So they were all getting, both of them were being triggered. But when you press a key on the keyboard to fire one, it will only fire the one. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But anyway, I've got eight of them, and I'm only going a relatively short distance. So, we're restocked. So, let's get the hell out of here. Uh, okay, I'll be back when I'm out of populated space. Uh, and maybe finding something interesting to scan along the way. Otherwise, I'm just going to be trying to make my way there. Landing gear retracted. Um, with a fair amount of speed. I don't want to spend too much time on this. It's only a short distance mission, so I'm not going to be uh, I'm not going to be doing my full exploration mode. So I will see you back when something interesting occurs. Well, I'm about ten jumps out from Shinrata Dresra now and I've already hit my first system that has a first discovery here uh, it's probably a long way away um, and again it's where just the main planets have been scanned and people couldn't be asked with the little ones 
So, far be it for me to break that tradition. Oh, he got that one, and that one, and that one, and that one. They must have just all been pretty close, because he couldn't be bothered with these. Yep, that one's way too far away. So, that's that little update, and ever onwards we trudge. We are in HIP 35804A at the moment, and there are 13 jumps left to go. So, just over halfway. And in this Our system is this big thing. Uh, B class, uh, a B class star, and down below is two little dicky ones, and this one. So I'm going to scan this entire system, even though the furthest one is 11,000. It's not a big deal, a minute or so. And look at that. Hazy blue. Well, remember to put the orbit lines on for when you're getting near a star so you know where the outer edge is and uh, when you're getting too close. Of course, I can turn them off now. But so far, so good. I've scanned a few planets. In a few systems, I haven't scanned any total systems yet, but this will be the first one. No first discoveries, no surprises there. So, once I've got this done, I shall be boldly going on my way. Alright, so here's a beauty. This looks like a double neutron star. This thing wouldn't scan until I got to within four light seconds and it is in fact a neutron star and that means so is this guy so that's a double neutron star we got here in this system so worth coming to possibly Anyway, just thought I'd update you on that one. Still in this same system. HIP 35804. In case you want to pop by. Yeah, guess what? I did an emergency stop too close. Yeah. They're scanning the second neutron star. Once it was, uh, once the scanning was underway, I didn't slow down soon enough or quick enough, and it dropped me out. But, I'm not really that bothered about it, because it's going to give me a chance, no, okay, hold on a second, yeah, that's it. There it is. So, I um, need to put it behind me. This is going to give me a very good chance to test out the AFMs. Uh, there's no hull damage, so I'm okay there. But there is module damage, albeit just a couple of percent. So hopefully we can hit super cruise fairly quickly. Frame shift drive charging. Well, the heat's climbing Four, rather rather three, fast. Two, one, engage. Warning. So, so yeah, there will be a little bit more hull damage. Uh, sorry, module damage. Warning. Temperature critical. Mm. 
It's so easy to make these errors though. So let's just drop out and let's try this out. So in the modules, oh we didn't take any, I didn't take any more damage from that heat there. So if I put this on repair. Module repaired. Shields offline. Module repaired. They were both going down there. Didn't really want that. At least that's something I've learned. Module repaired. There you go. That one's repaired that one. Module repaired. Module repaired. My only pisser is the power plant. Module repaired. It's not going to matter because this repaired. is this is such a short journey that it's really not going to matter Module anyway. Repaired. Module repaired. Trusted online. Repaired. There we go, they've repaired each other. Yeah, the power plant, you can't repair that. Uh, but I'm okay with it. <coughs> Module repaired. Module repaired. Module repaired. Module repaired. Module repaired. Oh, that was already at a hundred. Okay, we are good. This isn't going to make a difference to anything. Shields online. And now I know to keep that at offline, so it only uses one at a time. Uh, okay, yeah, my shield's about to go offline, haven't they? Right, so I'll carry on with what I was doing. Frame shift drive charging. So yeah, you can take two AFMs to repair each other. Of course, the only thing you can't do is repair the power plant. But I'm almost there and on my way back, so it's no biggie whatsoever. Right, I'll keep you updated of any other shenanigans that happen along the way. And I'll see you then. We are back. And we are, as you can see, close. We're in the Eskimo sector. We have been for a few jumps. And two jumps away. But, no, I didn't scan the, the main star, as you can see. Drive but the nebula itself, it must be right there. That's the fella. <coughs> Which will be our next jump. It's small. And I hope it was worth the visit. Because I reckon it's taken me, including scanning a few bits and pieces, uh, just over an hour. So, not too bad. I don't need to scoop. Uh, I can scoop. Oops, I can scoop at my destination there. Let me just get a bit closer. So, it'll be another one of these or a red one. There it is. Brown dwarf, red dwarf, brown dwarf, brown dwarf. Yeah, whatever. I meant red in colour. And it's not even that, is it? It's purple. Right, so this next jump is the one then.
So let's get this ship uh, some distance away from this star. And there it is, it should brighten up in a little while. So while that does that, let's just turn this off. And there it is, the Eskimo Nebula. And that's what it looks like from 30 odd light years away. I'm just gonna, oh actually, before I do that, I don't want all the lines. You know, I, I can't remember. Did I recolor this ship? <laughs> anyway, let me see if I can just tip it up, get that nice dynamic angle, if you like. All right, then let's light up the dash and make the jump. Frameshift drive charging. Here we go. I'm expecting a black hole in this system, but I will be backing off the throttle even though I know it's a. I think it's a. Is it a B? Yeah, I think it's a B class white star, I think. But I will be backing off the throttle anyway. Sunglasses on. Ooh. This thing's gonna block out the nebula, isn't it? Wow. This thing's gonna totally block out the nebula until we get a long way from it. One new object. And there it is. Seventy one thousand light seconds away. Maybe I can use the uh, hide behind the black hole. <laughs> you can see the nebula just very vaguely. Well, if I get another emergency stop here, oh, I should be okay. So orbit lines off. I'm hoping this is going to brighten up a little bit more. So there we have it. We have. Uh, hold on. Hold on. I need to be in here. We have this big bugger. Type O. Sorry, yeah, type O, not B. Uh, that one, and a black hole. And of course, because of the size of that star, this nebula's not got very bright at all. But it is, as described, kind of that patchy red and green, if you like. I think it's green, blue, grey, whatever. Have to be careful here. Yeah, my ship is in grey colour, which is what I use for the Rubigo run. As you can see, the brightness of that uh, O-class star still causing issues for us not seeing the nebula as bright as maybe we, we could if it was on the dark side of a planet. <clears throat> I hope this scans at a fair distance. I won't be getting too close to it, that's for sure. 
I hope. You never know with me. Well, this is basically all it is. We're there. I don't know if there's anything else close by. I mean, there's coal sack over here, but I don't really fancy going over there. So this looks to be roughly about as bright as it gets. Welcome to the uh, Welcome to the Eskimo Nebula. Well, if this had been a couple of thousand light years away, I suppose I would have been pretty disappointed, especially seeing as how there's no planets in it. But as it's been a short distance trip really it's okay because I can now say that I've been and seen and it's yet another nebula to add onto my list of nebulas I've been to and I've picked up a little bit of exploration data not too much I don't think I'm going to rank up more than maybe a couple of percent Nebula isn't getting any brighter, so I guess we'll just have to be content with this. Like one minute ten. Mm. No, I'm not going to do any more outside shots because for that to get the shot I want, I'm going to have to either come out of super cruise or slow it right down, and I don't want to do either at the moment. So, at 800 light years away from Shinrata Desra, is this the closest black hole to Shinrata? Is this indeed the closest black hole to populated space? I don't know. If anyone knows of a black hole closer than 800 light years, from Shinrata or from well any populated area I suppose then uh, please leave a comment and let me know and if I've not been there then uh, I'll do a video of me going there I would really oh, like to land it on a planet here get the buggy out and stuff like that and there's not even a planet close by I don't want to be too distracted while all this is going on. So my profits from exploration is... Oh, I'll never remember that. 28957. Yeah. I, I probably will hit 29 million profits from exploration after this trip. Because I've only got to find 43,000 and I think I'm going to do that quite easily. I've done two neutron stars, I'll have done a black hole, some high metal content worlds, O type, B type. Yeah, I easily think I'm going to hit 29 million. 
So that'll be okay, that'll be another little uh, milestone, I suppose. Come on, black hole. I'm going to be backing this off at around nine seconds. And if it starts to scan, I'm going to back it off all the way. How close will I have to get? As soon as the scan begins, I'm going to drop the throttle to zero. It doesn't mean it won't drop me out though, but I am getting closer. Here we go, black hole, come on, there it is. <laughs> Alright then, so let's have a look around. Actually, let's drop out. So this is what it looks like. Now where is my ship? It's there. So the star must be... That's got to be it, right? That little blue dot. That's got to be the A class... Uh, sorry, the O class star. That's not a bad little view, actually. Look at my trail, my uh, vapor trail, still there. Despite the fact that my ship has stopped. It's fading away, it's fading away. There it is in that white cloud. Yes. This is it, folks. This is your Eskimo Nebula. And if I pull back, I is that distortion there? Or is that just coincidentally a hot well the brighter blue dot right in the center of the screen there. Is that the black hole distortion? I wonder. Dare I go a bit further in to find out. I'm trying to see some uh, the distortion, if there is any, visible. Mm, and I'm obviously taking a couple of screenies. So. <laughs> well, you only live once, right? Let's charge Friendship this thing up and head in just a little. Ready to engage. Four, three, two, one, engage. If it drops us out in, into an emergency stop, then I'll kind of be okay. It's not like it's going to kill me. Famous last words. But I am going to be very tentative here. So if it does drop me out, I'm not going to be going that quick. I mean, is that distortion? Do I need to make the fatal mistake of taking up the throttle? Uh, the HUD? Why did I say throttle? Because I know I have to watch the throttle. Yes, look at the look at the stars around it. They're moving around. There, look, it is distortion, because now that blue hot spotty thing's gone, and now it's up here. There it is. There's the black hole. It's visible. See? 
there it is and that's the distortion I don't know if I can get much close you see the star on the right hand side of the of the distance meter there the 5.87 megameters the star on the right as I move forward you'll see it moving look at that there you go How close can I get before something happens? And will it be just one of those you've hit the wall kind of things? Zone, that's something zone, whatever it says. Let's just stop it here. Take the hood off. There is the black hole. a nice little photo to send back to the family Ooh. yes all right let's press on I know something's going to happen, but I'm prepared. I'll take the consequences, whatever they might be. Now we're seeing a little bit of distortion, aren't we? Around the edges of that, look at that. Wow. There you go. There you go, look at this. <laughs> That's what I want to see. That's nice. Oh, shit. Oh, did you hear that? I'm in the distortion. Help. Help, 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 help. Oh, wow, that's awesome. I know the black hole was pulling me in there, but look at this. Okay, I have but all but stopped. Uh, what does this look like on the outside? Holy crap. I'm sure this thing's pulling me in. So I'm going to have to take some kind of care. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I just want... Oh, yeah, you know what I want. I want a screenshot. Like, aha like this. Ah, get the whole ship in. Oh, neat. Oh look, I've pulled out there. I've pulled out to the swirly. Well, I'm um, a glutton for punishment, so I'm going to go back in. Now, you can see the distance is decreasing. And I'm only at 30 kilometers per second, but I'm pretty sure that I'm moving in a lot faster than that. To boldly go, eh? Oh Christ, I'm just within kilometers of it now. I don't know what's going to happen if I hit the... hit it. Strong signal source? What? What? I don't even want to guess what's in there. Yeah, what is in there? There can't be any ships out here. Oh, wow, look at this. I'm kind of, I, think, I think I'm skirting around the edge of it here. Oh, my God. It's the effect of the nebula around the hole. Which makes it, it looks like some kind of marble, almost. Oh, wow. I'm trying my best not to get screwed. And at the same time, 
try and give a pretty decent view here. I'm just trying to circle round. Wow. You know, if, if this thing sucked me right in and blew the ship up, I really wouldn't care too much. It's not a massive rebuy cost. I don't know if it will. I don't. Can it? Will it? Can Sagittarius A do that? Oh, look at this. How's that for a view, eh? Can we quickly go outside, do you think? Take a look at it. I, don't, I wouldn't even know which way to look. Which way am I looking? There we go. I'm just trying to nab a couple of screenshots so that I can uh, maybe use this as a, some kind of wallpaper. Uh, okay, I just need to know where it is again, which is here. Well, no pain, no gain, eh? Let's get in a bit further. Impact, look, impact warning. Oh, man. Whoa! There you go. Now what? Now my heat is at 57. Does it go up if I get closer? There you go. There you go folks. That is the black hole. Probably why this nebula is so small. This thing's probably sucking it in. There's a screenshot for you. Yes, it's dropped my ship out, but uh, I don't care. I will make the sacrifice. Wow, my field scoopy things have come on. Oh, I'm just going to grab that. Ah, so this was worth coming to the nebula for that there's a lot of color banding though isn't there but that I don't know I don't know if that's a result of the graphics being turned down or something or just the way things are but there's this little in the middle of the screen there there's a little round uh, distortion that goes in the big one. There you go. Maybe that's some kind of lensing effect. I'm sure there's those who can explain that to me better. But that looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like a marble. Now, if I was to slightly increase the exposure of that picture in Photoshop, that might come out quite spectacular. Wow. I'm completely inside this gravitational field, if that's what it is. Oh, how hot's the ship getting, by the way? <laughs> okay, we've, we're sustained at 57, so... Yeah, I'm quite happy to sit here. Okay, so I got close enough to drop out, and... This is the reward. You can see the star field just it almost just sits on top like a like a layer. As you can see, look, the stars just Yeah. Not bad. The fact that it's in a nebula gives you this effect. I couldn't have I couldn't have left this nebula without without doing this. Sorry, I'm just playing around here. I'm just having a lot of fun. Playing around with a black hole. See the nebula just the fact that it's here just allows these effects to take place. Oh. 
amazing. Just amazing. I almost, yeah, it is. It's like a blue, blue and orange, bluey, like a turquoisey almost. But it's, it's so cool to have this. Yes, I don't really want to go. I'm quite happy to, to be here. My ship seems like it's quite happy. I'm not really sure how to get out of here. I know I'm going to have to turn away from the black hole, but I'll be okay. I'll manage that. Wow, I love all this warpy, warpy effect. There's a picture you won't see every day. There's the asp just inside this swirly cloud, like it's going down a, like down a plug hole or something. Every move I make, like on the joystick here, is a is another great screenshot. I wonder if I could just, just for a little bit, just. No, no, no. Just throttle up half distance. Assist no, you know Flight that's not you know that's not what I wanted. Throttle up to half distance and go outside. And be quick about it. I just want the engines on. That's what I want. That's the shot I wanted. Whoa, look at that. That line going there. What's that all about? There you go. Wow, what a shot! There you go, body exclusion zone hit. That's what I was looking at. Now, does that mean that I can't get any closer than 100 kilometers? Yes. It's vir it stopped me. Yeah. It's it stopped the ship. It has stopped the ship. I can't get any closer. And the temperature has remained just fine. Well, this video is a little bit long because of all this, but it is really rather nice. And I did briefly, just briefly, get a nice screenshot with the engines on. See, that would have made a nice shot with engines on. But I have hit the exclusion zone, so I suppose I could... Uh, yeah, what if I... Um, Flight assist off. What if I go... Oh, it won't maintain, will it? Now then, I do have a control button for... I think it's control... No, it must be... Is it control 5? F5? Mm, left shift. Here we go. Yes. But I don't think that's going to light up the back thrusters, is it? It's going to light up the front ones. Now, why have the thrusters suddenly gone off? Oh. Right. Flight assist on. I know what I want to try and do. I just can't seem to bloody do it. Let's 
just try and get another quick one here. Go this way around. I don't know whether those uh, vents are going to stay open. No, they're not. There you go. <coughs> So I'm just going to quickly max it and pray, get my finger on the screenshot button, come on, come on, come on, come on, there we go, I'm happy with that, did it within 4 kilometers. Okay guys, this is the uh, Eskimo Nebula, as you well know, and uh, this is what to expect if you decide to come here and it, it doesn't take long to get here from populated space and if you want to see some nice black hole effects within a nebula then this is definitely definitely the place to be uh, oh and for those that might not know it's control alt and G to turn the hood on and off Yes. Very, very cool. Very nice. And I have some nice screenshots, some nice exploration data. And it was a nice trip. However, it is time to plot the route back. So I'll see you guys later. Wow.